from the high desert in the great American Southwest. Good morning, good evening, and or good morning, wherever you may be across this great land of ours, from Guam, out across the state line, all the way east to the Caribbean, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, where I'm going to go visit one day, south into South America, north all the way to the pole. This is Coast to Coast AM, worldwide, of course, on the Internet. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to do something a little different first. You may recall, I think it was the end of last week. Yes, it was, Saturday morning. I read you a story that was faxed to me by somebody in Columbia, Missouri. And I thought it incredible. The uh, story is uh, entitled, Kansas City Man Tries to Build Time Machine on Porch. Now, in case you don't remember the, uh, the the general tenure of the article, I'm going to remind you now. Kansas City Associated Press. When a Missouri factory worker set out to make a time machine on his back porch, the contraption he came up with was not completely off the mark, theoretically, according to scientists. For the high-voltage electrical transformer that Michael Markham had hooked up to two vertical metal rods would more likely have killed him blown up his house, then carried him into the past or future. Time travel, though enticingly possible in the mathematics of Einstein's theory of relativity, is not likely in the physical universe, they say. Uh, they uh, go on, quote, it is a very interesting area, though. There are theoretical physicists working on those areas, and I will not say that it's total nonsense. This was according to um, the uh, chairman at the physics department at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. But he went on, it's not something that you can demonstrate with batteries. And I guess that was Michael's problem. So are the Stanbury police who say the voltage that Martin had diverted into the contraption caused power interruptions in and around the northwest Missouri town of about 1300. Markham had connected the metal rods to the terminals of a transformer, one of six stolen from a utility company in hopes of creating a large spark gap with ascending electrical arcs. Markham was arrested January 29th on a felony charge of stealing the transformers from a St. Joseph light and power generating station in King City. He pleaded guilty last month, was placed on five years probation. Police said the transformers had a capacity of 12 to 76,000 volts each, enough to easily cause electrocution or an explosion. Markham, who told police that he has two years of college-level electrical engineering, said he was building a time machine, but didn't have enough power for it. Uh, that's according to the Stanbury police chief, Tom Hampton. Hampton said, quote, he's not nuts. He appears to be an intelligent person with a lack of common sense, maybe. Hampton said Markham told officers he had not tried to enter the uh, spark gap, and neither had anyone else. If anyone had, they probably would, would have been electrocuted, not transported in time. Presumably, he decided that if he got enough electricity together, he could build a time machine, because there is the concept that if you're going to do it, it's going to require an enormous amount of energy. So there it was, and um, you know me and these kinds of stories, and how I'm fascinated by time. So I set out to find young Mr. Markham, and I found him. But it bet you have to like, get it real close. But, uh, and it's at 2,000 volts, it has to be within like half the bottom the space, between, uh, the space between the rods at the bottom has to be like half a millimeter apart for an arc. How uh, far apart were your two rods on the first small machine you built? Uh, about two inches. Two inches? Oh, that's pretty good space. Yeah. Um, so then um, it dawns on you, let's build a big one. Yeah. So now, I didn't ask you about this earlier, but in order to get enough uh, voltage and current, you needed a big transformer. Now, yeah. it's true the power company has big transformers. Yeah. Really nice ones. Yeah. And um, how did it dawn on you to, what's the word we should use, borrow one of the, or several of the power company's transformers? Uh, 
I get the idea for it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, you knew you knew you needed a transformer. How did it occur to you? Well, to... Uh, originally, what I was going to do, I was, I was like, uh, I was like originally going to like buy them. Like, there's like a, a transformer company in Kansas City that makes them for the power company, and uh, well, there was an idea. Yeah, but uh, it's like uh, I could have like saved my money and bought and bought those, but those are expensive. How much is a transformer? Just out of curiosity. Uh, well, I'll give you an idea. When I, buy, when I buy them from the factory, I buy them at wholesale, but the, the St. Joseph Light and Power, the power company I stole them from, uh, they're about, they value the six transformers I took, they value them at $13,600 some dollars. Oh my, uh, so that's not shoplifting. All right, Michael, hold on a moment, we've got a little business to do here, and we'll get right back to you. My guest, um, my guest is a very unusual person. My guest is Michael Markham, and uh, he's in the business of building a time machine, and now he's going to go to work on it again. Wow. Michael Markham, uh, back with us in just a moment with more about time travel. Be patient with me. We're talking to Michael Markham. Maybe. Maybe some might be tempted to call him Madman Markham. God, I love this music. Um, back now to Michael. Michael, are you there? Uh, yeah. They don't call you Madman Markham, do they? Uh, I haven't been called that yet. <laughs> I just made that up, Michael. Don't let it bother you. <laughs> All right, so uh, here we are, wanting now to build our big... At this point, what were you calling it, by the way? Obviously, it was no little entertainment thing anymore. Uh... Well, it's, like I said, I, I'm not sure what this thing was. It was either a 10th magnetic field or or some sort of time machine. Well, actually, it would have been a combination of electrical and uh, a magnetic field, I guess. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you, you, plans got big. You decided you want to build a great big one. So according to the story, you had two big poles on your porch. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, three-inch three inch metal rods. Really? How yeah. big? You mean how long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, roughly four feet. Oh, that would have made a big spark. Yep. Big spark. And uh, so you had the the rods, and you needed the transformers desperately. Yeah. You probably could have saved up for it, but you didn't. You made a mistake. Yeah. And I you. In a hurry. So what did you do? Did you sneak into their yard? Oh, you mean the... the... In other words, how did you get the Transformers? You didn't heist them off a pole, of course. Oh, heck no. Uh-huh. So... They were noticed immediately they were gone then. But uh, these these were just uh, sitting by a, a substation in King City. Just sitting there? They were just sitting, yeah, just sitting. They've been, uh, they've been sitting there for ever since I moved to Missouri, so... You hated to see them uh, languishing without use. Yeah, well, they were just sitting there rusting. Uh-huh. And, heck... They don't, they don't even use them. Heck, in fact, right now, they just got them put away for safekeeping, they say, so... Probably historical record. Um, yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, what did you do? Take a pickup truck? Uh, those things are heavy, aren't they? Uh, yeah, uh, the biggest one I had, the biggest one I had weighed 350 pounds. Ooh, well, then, you must have had... An accomplice. Yeah, a couple of them. A couple of them? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't talked to them. Uh, one of that, uh, their court date was the same as mine, and they, was, they didn't look too happy with me. So. Uh, I'm sure they weren't. Uh -huh. So anyway, somehow uh, you talked them into helping you out in this venture. Yeah. And you snuck down there, no doubt, late at night. Well, it was right in, it was right in broad daylight. Broad daylight? Yeah, roughly 11 o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so in broad daylight, you took the Transformers, loaded them up in a pickup truck, I guess? Yeah. And hauled them to your house? Yep. I see. And you had how many of them? Six. Why six, Michael? Well, uh... I mean, I mean why did you feel you needed six? Well, origi originally, I was just going to take a couple of them, but it's like a... You got carried away? Yeah, pretty much. I see. All right, uh, so you got the Transformers to your house, and um, then you, um, I guess, hooked up the secondary. Uh, no, it would have been the primary of the Transformer to the poles, correct? Uh, yeah, basically, I had hooked it backwards. Yeah, that's right, backwards. So yeah. the primary was hooked to the poles, the secondary 
you hooked up to the power coming into your home? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened when you did that, by the way? Uh, well, it's, I didn't get to the, the big version of it. I didn't get the laser part yet. I was going to order that from uh, New Jersey. Had you, uh, you see, had you, uh, had you produced a large spark with it? Uh, yeah, the, the, see, I, that's another thing, too, before I, I was, like, arrested on the 30th, and, uh, on um, February 3rd, I was going to order, I was going to get, pick up, like, uh, 60 feet worth of cable so I can reinforce the cable to my house, so. You mean, of, you mean actually coming in from the pole? Uh, yeah. Uh, what were you going to do, climb the pole? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Michael. Because uh, I figured if I called the power company and had them reinforce the cable to my house, I'd, like, draw suspicion, so... Uh-huh. Um, so, so, well, I'm sure it would. Uh, yes, it would. <laughs> they would want to know why. Yeah, well, why I'd need a cable that carries 2,000 amps instead of the usual 200. <laughs> now, so you, you did, though. You nevertheless uh, hooked it up and you, you turned it on, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I hooked up the smallest one that I could hook up without, like overloading the cable and causing a fire. Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, it's pretty, just that in itself is just like a, a, a giant Jacob's ladder. Like a... How, 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 um, how far apart were you able to get these poles and still produce the spark? Uh, about 18 inches. 18 inches. Yeah, it was, it was a, uh, the trend, it was the smallest one I uh, had. It was, uh, changed a, uh, uh, two, change 240 to 12,470. 12,470. Um, so when you did this, according to the newspaper, you bl blacked out or browned out portions of your whole town. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I was like overloading the power grid because uh, I was drawing more power than I thought it was. Well, what got you caught? Was that what got you caught? Uh, no, uh, uh... Uh, in a nut, in a nutshell, uh, a friend uh, a friend of mine was uh, at my house. As well, uh, uh, somebody squealed on you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but uh, exactly, and I probably never know. Uh, that's in the past. I ain't really worried about that now. But uh, what happened was a friend of mine, like from my house, uh, sh uh, shot a BB gun, like shot out my next door neighbor's sliding glass door window. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I like, got the cops snooping around, so. And they just happened to see this incredible rig on your porch. Uh, no, they came. That's uh, that happened at roughly. Uh, I can't remember.